within the church. Now, here in Nevada in 2016, as a registered Republican, I did vote for Trump. And it wasn't because I was so enamored with his policies, but because unfortunately, I made a very brash vow. Now, God warns us against making brash vows because we're going to have to follow through. If we say we're going to do something, we have to do it. And sometimes we end up doing things that, you know, we should have never promised to do in the first place. And prior to the 2016 election, for about 10 years, I always said that if Hillary Clinton ran for president, I would vote for literally anybody who ran against her, including Satan himself. Now, in 2020, I see that while I didn't cast my vote for Satan himself, we came pretty close in Donald Trump. And the reason that I say this is because he is nothing but a charlatan, a liar, and he's emboldening false teachers to creep into the church to preach another gospel. And this is a huge problem. So let me tell you a little bit about how Trump isn't pro-life. Number one, well, when he came into office, he had a Republican House and a Senate, and then he has the executive branch, and he didn't push anything through for you know, lessening abortion or taking it back to the states. Nothing. So it's all lip service. No matter how many times he's like, oh, I'm pro-life. He, Okay, well, let's see it through your actions. Don't just say you're going to do something. You have to actually live it, right? So he's not pro-life. And not only is he not pro-life on the abortion issue, we see in 2020 he's not pro-life when it comes to coronavirus because you can't say that you're pro-life and then mismanage an entire pandemic where people die. And then instead of you know, admitting your mistakes, repenting of these things, when he is faced with the fact like X hundred thousand plus people have died, his response is, it is what it is. That is not somebody who cares about the sanctity and dignity of life. And I see Christians have thrown common sense out the window. They've thrown science, which shows that we sh- we serve a creator God who follows law in order to create a universe. We see Christians throwing out science, not listening to wise counsel, as the book of Proverbs tells us to do. Instead, they are falling for all sorts of lies, like, oh, well, these people would have just died anyway because they had comorbidities. It's like people are just throwing common sense right out the window, throwing science, which proves that we serve a creator God, to just buy into like idiotic propaganda that isn't pro-life. And as a Christian, I'm here to preach the message of the gospel to people. And I can't preach the message to the, of the gospel to people if they're dead from coronavirus. It's just, it's exhausting. And, you know, we live in a fallen world. And as Christians living in a fallen world, we have to deal with people in their situation right now. And we have to be prepared for the fiery darts of the devil Today, we can't just be like, oh, well, you know, in the Garden of Eden. Well, we don't live in the Garden of Eden. This is why we have to prepare. And for Donald Trump to fire the pandemic response team in 2018 is just, it's not prudent. It's stupid. And then to say he's pro-life when he does something this egregious and this negligent is laughable to me. You know, with Obama, we had Ebola. And only a handful of people die. And it's like, well, thank God they had the pandemic response team to put a stop to something like Ebola. But with coronavirus, you have Christians where they're just like, eh, doesn't matter. What? How can you say that you're pro-life when you don't care if these people die? How is that not reminiscent of Nazi Germany where it's like, oh, well, they're sick, they're infirm, you know, they have some disability, so just let them die. This is not how Jesus behaved. This is not how Christians who have the Holy Spirit living inside of them should behave. Because if you claim Jesus, if you're going to call on his name and say, I belong to him, you can't take his name in vain and be like, "Eh, none of this matters. Like you will know them by their fruits and not caring if people live or die so that you can go out to, you know, your chain restaurants and eat inside. 
that's not Christian. You can't say, oh, well, you know, I, I just want to go down to the shops today. And that matters more than people dying. Because if people die without hearing the message of Jesus Christ, it's game over for them. And it's God's desire that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I can't share the message of the gospel and talk about repentance with people if they die of COVID. So it's not, it's not just the fact that Trump is not pro-life, okay? It's that I see that Trump is, he's, he's surrounding himself with grifters and charlatans, and they've always been known as grifters and charlatans within the Christian community. You have people like Jim Baker, who's been to prison for, you know, fraud. Um, he is telling people on his channel, that Trump is a test and that only saved people can love Trump. That is a huge problem because they are preaching another gospel. And it's not just Jim Baker. It's so many pastors who are just dying for Trump to give them a retweet or invite them to the White House or have them speak at a, a convention or something like that, um, where they have also change the message of the gospel to instead, like, let's talk about how great Trump is. And what does Paul say? If anyone or even an angel from heaven preaches another gospel, let them be accursed. The test of true salvation is not whether or not you are loyal to Trump, but it is, do you believe in the risen Savior, Jesus Christ? If you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord and you believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I don't see Trump anywhere in the book of Romans telling us, well, this is the test of how you're saved or how you can receive salvation. This is a huge problem because not only are parishioners who are just dying to get a shout out from Trump, um, not only are they twisting the gospel, preaching another gospel, but they're exploiting people in their greed. And if they're exploiting people in their greed, there's going to be eternal consequences for people who think that they know Jesus, but they don't. Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And I don't want that for people. You know, when we are talking about Jesus in the Bible, we need to be talking about how we can reach out to the lost, how we can build Jesus's kingdom, not Donald Trump's kingdom. And that's what I see being preached in churches. Let's build up the earthly kingdom of Donald Trump. And it's like, it's not about him. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about reaching out to the lost. And we have to remember that we might be the only Bible that people ever experience. And, um, Sorry, I'm like getting emotional, but it's like, what kind of witness is it to unbelievers when you see Christians in shops like being um, obnoxious or arrogant to shopkeepers who tell them that they have to wear a mask? Um, what kind of witness is it to people when they see Christians like spitting on people or coughing in their face or making a scene or fighting with the cops? because they don't want to obey something as simple as social distancing. It's ridiculous. It's like, we have to remember that God installs kings and governments, and um, we can't just throw out Romans 13, 1 Peter 2, and Titus 1, just because it says something that we don't want to hear, which is, guess what? God also installs Democrats, not just Republicans. And when the leaders are telling us to do something that is not causing us to sin, like simply just wear a mask, social distance when you're out, because we want to keep the economy open. We want to keep as many people working as possible. So here are some like smart, simple tips that you can do to just, you know, mitigate spreading the virus. When you have people acting like lunatics because they don't want to obey these authorities that God himself put in, you know, God even put Ahab and Jezebel in. Um, I just see that there's, there's a huge issue going on in the church because they're throwing out scripture because it doesn't align with Trump's propaganda. And I wouldn't even say that Trump is a Republican. He's not even conservative. I mean, you know, as conservatives, we should be against, you know, just constant handouts for people who, who don't need it. We don't need to enable people. And we see that Trump is for enabling corporations with its corporate handouts, corporate welfare, 
crony capitalism. And it's just like, as Christians, how can we be for this? You know, if they don't work, they shouldn't eat. And then Trump's over here uh, promoting crony capitalism and giving them bailouts while people are starving, while people are about to lose their homes. How can we say that this is Christ-like or that this is pro-life? This is a huge problem in the church. And I just see that people have forsaken their first love. They've forsaken Jesus. They're like the church in Ephesus in the book of Revelation, except unlike the church of Ephesus, they're tolerating false teachers and they're not even doing works that um, show the love of Christ to others. They're just, just straight up hook, line, and sinker buying into the propaganda of a false teacher who has always been a joke, who's always been a charlatan, and this is what they're selling out their faith for, for Donald Trump of all people. You know, how many, how many um, bankruptcies does he have? Like five bankruptcies. You know, the Bible says that a worker is worthy of his wage. How many people are unpaid because of Trump? You know, El Paso hasn't even been repaid for, you know, the rallies that Trump has had there. A worker is worthy of his wage, and instead Trump uses bankruptcies to get out of paying people. This is unbiblical. It is wrong. It is evil. These people depend on being paid for their work, for their time, so that they can feed their families and keep a roof over their heads. And Donald Trump is taking that away from people. You know, how can you say that he is a Christian when he can't even recite a Bible verse, he doesn't want to talk to people about it. He says that he doesn't need to repent. He just needs to be better. We can't earn salvation. Trump can't earn salvation. And it's like, we need to remember that we need to be like Bereans. And if somebody comes to us and says, you know, this person's pro-life, this person's a Christian, this person is a, a godly person, we need to search some records to see if that's even true. And, you know, scripture tells us to test the spirits because not every spirit comes from God. And the spirit that is on this man is just, it's like straight up demonic because he is turning people away who call themselves Christians from their first love, Jesus Christ. He is emboldening them to act like it's the time of the judges where everybody does what is right in their own eyes. And they're no longer showing the love of Christ to people. Instead, they're just being arrogant and obnoxious and they're foregoing the law. They're lawless. They are lawless. And it's at the behest of Donald Trump. And we have to remember that, yes, God installs governments, including, you know, non-Republicans, right? But God does this sometimes as a judgment on people. And right now it's time for Christians to realize what is happening and turn back to the truth, turn back to Jesus and say, no, I'm not going to build the earthly kingdom of Donald Trump. I'm here to do the work of an evangelist. I'm here to carry out my mission and I'm not going to let anybody cut in on my race. I'm going to keep preaching Jesus and I'm going to stand against somebody who is pro death, who is cutting people's lives short through his own mismanagement. I'm going to stand up against him because I want those people to hear the message of Jesus. So anyway, <laughs> with the election right around the corner, um, I did cast my ballot and I did not vote for Trump. And I would urge you to vote for the person who is not going to allow charlatans around them to preach another gospel in the church. So this is why I voted for Joe Biden. And it's not because I love Joe Biden or that I think his policies are wonderful. It's because Donald Trump is fundamentally altering the message that is going out in the church. And I don't think that is going to happen with Joe Biden or even Kamala Harris. So I can deal with them. I cannot deal with the charlatans and grifters infiltrating the church for another four years. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys.